yeah, it's just stunning to look at. It's so beautiful. But the screen is touchscreen. I mean, like, that's freaking crazy. Metal. <laughs> There's so many different sounds here. I mean, this is a game changer for the next G. Children, do you remember when I went to the future and I brought back a souvenir? Well, Marty, I went back to the future. And I brought back another. That's right, children. We are looking at the next G2 from our good friends over at Enya. Now, we're mostly going to be talking about some of the new features, and that's because whatever I don't mention is basically the exact same as the original next G. Video is going to be up there, by the way. You can check that video out, basically get an understanding of what the next G is, how it works, its function, its purpose. But a brief summary is that it is the world's first smart audio guitar with a built in speaker. And I've done shows with it. It sounds great when played through a PA. It's not going to replace an acoustic guitar. It's something in and of itself. It is its own category of guitar, and I freaking love it. We are going to be talking about the new features in this guitar, the Next G2, and how I think they really, really, really improved it. And not only are we going to be talking about the new features on this guitar, but also how some of the new features kind of made me like appreciate the original features on the Next G1. Also, for reference, in this video, I'm going to refer to the Next G first generation as the OG and the Next G2 as. Two. Moving on. So right off the bat, we have to, have to, have to talk about this finish, okay? I really freaking love this finish. I didn't think it would look as incredible as it does. Right now on this camera, I can see right here, it looks a little blue, but it's actually like purple in it as well. It's got shades of purple and blue and in certain lighting. I love it because it kind of reminds me of like a Prince Cloud guitar. Just overall, it looks so sleek and compact. Oh my God, by the way, we have to, have to, have to talk about rose gold everything look at that all these little accents from the little rings of the top out to the knob to the strap locks and again the tuners the rose gold everything really pops out against this bluish purple color yeah it's just stunning to look at it's so beautiful and uh what it did was i remember taking the second generation next g out of its box and looking at it and marveling at how the rose gold really makes the finish kind of pop out and just how it just looks so beautiful like a champagne bottle or something and i was thinking you know i wish the og had some accents and it did apparently i never noticed it but it did the accents on the og are actually just matte silver and i didn't notice that because of how seamlessly it blends into i guess the aesthetic of the guitar but the guitar is more spartan in and of itself it's kind of like it's more like a modern minimalist kind of design and that's kind of i think what enya is known for when it comes to their carbon fiber lines i think it's beautiful but this baby, you can just hang up, you know, you could put it up as a, a piece of art and it looks great. So as I mentioned before, we're only going to be talking about the new specs on this guitar that have improved on the OG. Getting onto the improvements, and I say improvements because Enya actually listened to a lot of musicians' feedback, including my own. Now, if you recall, I went on a tour, had some overseas shows, and I took the OG with me. And it was a breeze to travel with. It was light, it was small, great form factor for traveling. The case was good. The case worked, and it was good enough. As a matter of fact, here is the case for the original Gen 1. So this is what it looks like on the inside of the original OG case. It was good enough for what it was. It kept the guitar safe. Again, small form factor, hard enough to take a beating if you needed to. My one issue with it was that it had no pouches, it had no bag. I don't really have any room in this guitar for anything other than the accessories that came with it. So it wasn't really that welcoming for other gear. Enter Gen 2's case. Not only does it have a pocket in the front, it's a deep, it's a deep, deep pocket. You can fit pedals, cables, capos, strings, set lists, pens, pencils, whatever you need. It could all go in there and it'll fit just fine. And this is where the Gen 2 would go and it has a little compartment here for that. But it's very nice, very velvety kind of feeling. So it's smooth. And I compare cases for like travel size guitars in comparison to the Taylor GS Mini case and the Taylor GS Mini in general, because that's kind of like the first to ever really do a great quality instrument that's travel size and great sounding. This is just as good as that case, if not a little better, simply because it's thinner. It's thinner and dare I say, it's probably a little shorter too. It's definitely thinner than Gen 1. As you can see, there's some of it peeking out over here. If I were to hold these on this side together, you can see some of Gen 1 kind of peeking out over here. And just like in Gen 1, the guitar strap for the next G2 is also serving as the strap for the case, which is pretty cool. And of course, it's much more slimmer overall, especially when you detach the top out again, in comparison to the GS Mini case. 
So that right there makes it a really worthy travel companion. Another thing to note is that the Next G2 is apparently 0.4 pounds lighter than the OG. I can't really feel the difference, but that's an improvement for sure. Who doesn't want a lighter guitar? That was my main recommendation for the Next G1 was make the case more travel friendly at a pouch. The second most important thing that, again, not a deal breaker either, but that they improved on was by removing the sort of felt cover that was on the speaker here in the OG. Now, there's nothing really inherently wrong with having that felt over the speaker. It felt weird to me anyway. And sometimes when you'd be playing, it would literally feel like I have speaker attached to the guitar, which again, is not a big deal. You know what you're getting yourself into when you get the next G. But what they did here with Gen 2 is they removed the felt cover over the speaker and it's like this plastic enclosure that is basically one with the guitar and it feels way better, feels way more guitar-like if you will. Small design things like this make things a lot more cooler just to touch and hold. And the tactile sensation of just holding this against your body and not feeling any kind of felt here is cool. Another improvement that we have here is apparently the subwoofer speaker as well as the tweeters are bigger and they can run through more power. So in argument, you can get a louder sound. You can go super loud. Who doesn't want to go loud when they have to? Great. Another improvement with the guitar is that the screen is now touchscreen as well as having an operating knob like it did in Gen 1. But the screen is touchscreen. I mean, like, that's freaking crazy. And in addition to being touchscreen, it has four separate banks and each of those four banks can hold five different sounds. So all together, you could have 20 sounds at the tip of your finger. And I gotta say, the layout for the touchscreen control is way more intuitive and easier to sort of like wrap your head around without even having to read the manual than the Next G. The Next G wasn't hard or anything like that by any means, but it's just more intuitive. It feels more user friendly and easier, especially if you're like not tech savvy. And again, the touchscreen lends itself to that. Regarding the sound banks, they sound just as good as in the Next G1. You do, again, have more options for effects and customizations. The options for switching between these tones and customizing them in the app, and even on here, believe it or not, is kind of endless. And that is freaking crazy. All to say, it's very intuitive and easy to use, but Enya didn't stop there. They included a looper and a drum machine in this guitar. And I remember going through the drum machine, just checking out the different drum patterns that they have. They're pretty decent, but I wanted to see how versatile and different they get. So obviously they have like rock, right? Here's rock. Ooh. Fairly simple. You can change the BPM. So this is BPM 80. Again, you press the BPM option and you turn the knob and it'll get faster. There's different rock beats. Yeah, here's rock four. <laughs> yeah, there's blues, right? Here's funk. Basically, there's a lot of different drum patterns here, but I was curious, do they have metal? And I kept scrolling, kept scrolling, jazz. Okay, okay, there's a lot of jazz options. Metal. <laughs> here's the second metal one. Indie. We have punk. That's interesting. Yeah, they have six, eight drum beats. So that right there is an incredible practice tool. You could practice with a metronome, sure. Everybody has, and it's great. But that makes it a little bit more fun. That makes taking this to the campfire and jamming with friends a little bit more entertaining, I think. And of course, there's also a looper function later. But let's save that till the end. Now let's talk a little bit more about these specs. Let's just go through some of the sounds that are just stock in this guitar. This is called Lab Acoustic. Lab Acoustic Funk. To Lab Acoustic Photo. Lab Acoustic Bass. And again, you could adjust the volume, see how it sounds in max volume. Again, does it sound better than an actual bass? No. Does it sound pretty damn good? Yeah, I think so. Let's go to the pad option to see what that sounds like.
The next G1 was a fantastic songwriting tool. This is an even more versatile songwriting tool, especially when you connect it to the app and you can just mess around with the sounds for days. Let's go to like, okay, we have acoustic rock, right? This is the acoustic rock we know and love. Right, that's acoustic rock. But we could change that sound from dreadnought to auditorium. It kind of does sound like, in comparison to a Dreadnought, how the auditorium has like more focused low end, or less of it even. It sounds like that. Let's go to the jumbo. I do hear the difference there. Finger, so what is this, finger style? Oh, like a nylon sound? <laughs> jazz sound. Let's see what this is. Okay, so that clearly sounds like a jazz box kind of guitar. The cool thing about this is I also remembered you could also edit the EQ of <laughs> certain guitar sounds through the app. So this is like versatile as hell. Again, we can do the tone thing here for days, but I want to show you guys some more. So this is the stock rock fusion setting on the next G1. Let's hear what it sounds like here. Okay, Rock Fusion, there we go. Now let's change it to Rock Crunch. Okay, I don't know if I'd use that one, but it's there. Riff. Cool, 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 cool. Country. Cool, cool. Endless, what is rock endless? What is this? Cool. And again, I'd like to mention that I did not change any of the settings on these presets. These are all stock. These are just how it came. I will change them when I connect the app to this, because why not? I could already see how this would fit a lot of my songs in terms of just live performance, just having certain specific uh, acoustic guitar sounds or guitar sounds in general at the tip of my fingers. I can't emphasize how incredible that would be to mess around with and play, and that'll add a depth to the performance. Anyway, I'm thinking about me. Let's focus back on you. Um, some more sounds. <laughs> I mean, like there's so many different sounds here. I mean, there's like a wah effect for crying out loud. Hold on. Here's the wah effect. I guess this is to give you an idea of what the different effects in this guitar are. Cool, cool, cool. Reverse. Let's hear what this sounds like. Yeah, definitely digital sounding effects. Freaking great, more color for the painting palette, why not? 
Also, it's kind of worth noting that another kind of improvement is that with the Next G1, the OG, you had to connect the Next G to the app in order to use it. Otherwise, it would turn off in like two minutes if you didn't use it. I don't know if you recall that in my previous video. I was like, why does it keep turning off? And that's because I didn't connect it to the app. For anybody who doesn't want to connect to the app, also, why not? Because you can customize these sounds and play around with a world of tones. If you don't, that's fine. This will not shut down in two minutes. This actually will stay on and allow you to play. Now, another improvement that the Next G2 has over the OG, as well as the X4 Mini, believe it or not, is this guitar has a tuner that is freaking great. The tuner finally works fantastically. I'm sorry. This is a game changer for the Next G. And Anya, the tuner is intuitive. The tuner works. The tuner is touchscreen. The tuner is chromatic. It's fantastic. It has a regular mode where you just use it as a tuner. Then it also has this like very kind of interesting user feature called beep where you basically press the beep mode with your finger. When you basically tune the string correctly, it'll tell, nice job. Boop. Yeah. It'll be basically green and it'll make a boop sound. Now voice Please mode. Please play the low E string. This is voice mode for tuning. All right. <laughs> Please play the A string. Okay, here it comes. All right. Please play the D string. Here we go. All right. Okay, you Please get the idea. Please play the G string. Yes, sir. We got it. We got it. So there's a voice mode there too, basically to really, really help out beginners who don't know how to tune their guitar or who are just learning how to tune the guitar. Voice mode is perfect for them because it literally tells them how to tune their guitar, how much they have to. Actually, let's tune our guitar and let's detune, let's say the E string. Let's just do that. What it does when it's a little low. Please tighten the tuning pack. Now let's tighten it a little too much and see what happens. Please loosen the tuning pack. Oh man, okay. Please loosen the tuning pack. Please tighten the tuning pack. Basically, it's a great, great, great tool for beginner guitar players who want to learn how to tune their guitar. That's usually lesson number one, right? Is how do you tune your guitar? Well, this will teach you how to do it. Now, from what I understand though, voice mode for tuning only tunes for standard tuning. And that's great, that's fine because most popular music today you can play in standard, no problem. So, fantastic tuner, super, super user-friendly, great for beginners. This is the charger port for the Next G2. It's interesting because, probably can't see it on this camera here, but the feeling of this charger port is leather as opposed to plastic like in the OG. And it is smaller, meaning the sticks right here, these little three-pronged tripod holder thingies, are smaller, or rather shorter. Therefore, it makes the charger port stay a little closer to the ground. Just an interesting thing to note. It not only operates as a Bluetooth speaker, that you can connect your phone to and play music, you could actually use this as an amp. That's right, you can use this as a guitar amp, bring an electric guitar out, plug it into this Next G2 and use it as an amp. Knowing that's an option is pretty freaking cool. Another cool thing about this guitar, especially for live performances, is it has a mute button, which I think is really cool because if you're playing, it's muted. So I like mute mode because when you're on stage and you're playing, you really don't have to worry about maybe any feedback or anything along those lines. You just press mute and it, the kill switch is engaged. So again, the guitar being used as a Bluetooth speaker as well as an amp that you can adjust the sound of through the amp and get effects. I'm, I'm flabbergasted at how so much thought has been put into this and I'm freaking out at the possibilities and I'm intimidated, but I will dive into it slowly. Now what I want to show you guys is this right here. This is, I believe, the ultimate companion for the Next G2. It's a portable control panel for the Next G2, and it's cool because you could access different sounds between the different buttons here through your Next G, so you don't have to do it out of touch of your finger. It could be literally like a pedal board. And the other cool thing about it is it also controls the tuner function as well as the looper function. But I want to try the looper function, right? You turn it on, wait for the light to turn on, and then once it's on, boom, the lights are on and it's telling you we're ready to go. Cool. The looper function is really cool because you get access it by pressing two buttons here. Now we're in the looper mode. You're in looper mode right there. And so I can see exactly what I'm controlling on the video display here, and I can control it with the pedal or pedal board, whatever you want to call it. So the cool thing about the Next G2 is you could actually customize a lot of things within the looper pedal system. You can customize the volume of the drums, the tempo of the drums, the volume of the guitar, the tone of the guitar, and you could also edit the type of beat you're going to get the drum beat to play. This is of course if you want to loop with a drum beat, I want to try it, why not? So here we go, let's try this out. Here we go, it's recording now, okay.
hear it. Make it a little louder. There we go. Okay. And I could go over here and change the tone and solo over this color. that it also has a mic, a microphone, that is an improvement on the next G1 because it doesn't require batteries. USB powered, baby. Let's do this. hi -o. <laughs> This is freaking crazy. This is a good time. I didn't really use the mic that came with the OG Next G because it required batteries. I was too lazy to get batteries. But I got USB-C cables and that's what I used to charge this mic. Actually, I didn't need to charge it. I, I charged it to see if it worked. It, it was fine. It came with power. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted just talking about all these effects. And if you needed any other reason to download the app, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me give you the best one. This is by far, I think, the coolest feature about the Next G2. So anybody who's aware of what the Kemper modeler is, it's basically a modeler that can record sounds and amplitudes and waves from your favorite amps and basically model them. Do like a like and like copy, one to one, of that favorite amp of yours that maybe is so expensive you don't want to take it out on tour because it'll get damaged. And it's replaceable or it has those special tubes that aren't even made anymore or whatever. Kemper, the system known as Kemper, came up with a modeler system that models the sound of that amp. Interesting when you consider, okay, well, what's it modeling? The pickups and the guitar being run through that app? Long story short, it's a whole thing, but it models amps. The app for the Next G2 has a acoustic guitar modeler, meaning you download the app, you put it close to the 12th fret, and you play one string at a time, <laughs> and it saves the sound through its AI technology. Next G has AI now. It saves the the sound and it replicates it. It models it so that your favorite guitar and expensive acoustic guitar can now be replicated with the Next G2 when you put it in your patch settings through the app. That is blowing my mind. I haven't had a chance to mess around with that yet. Comment down below if you'd like to see the Next G2's acoustic guitar profiler system at work and compare how it does. So there you have it folks. I mean it comes with so many different features. The wireless control panel pedal board, the mic, the Allen keys, a really good and useful case. Customizable sounds that you can access and edit through the app. The guitar itself looks beautiful, sounds pretty damn great. The speaker is just as good as the Next G1. I mean, I could compare the two. Actually, let's do that right now. Just to compare how the two sound to one another, here's acoustic rock mode at volume. Let's do volume five. Okay, and then now let's see if we could go to acoustic singer. I guess that's the closest we have here. Also seven. Different sounds, both usable. Can't really compare the two. I mean, like I use the app to customize the sounds here to my liking. So actually that was kind of a bad idea to do. But I wanted you to hear that the next G1 still holds up. It's just that the Next G2 has so many more options for sounds. Both are great, but I kind of feel like the Next G OG was like an incredible way to see if there was a market for this kind of smart audio guitar. And once Enya found out that there is, I feel like the Next G2 was something where they put in a lot of resources to get it not just right, but to get it perfect. It is literally a guitar, a smart audio guitar made for guitarists, probably by guitar. So that's huge. It is an extraordinary piece of technology meets musical gear. I am really, really pleased with it. I only have one con. Only one con, folks. There's only one thing that the Next G didn't do that the OG did do, and that's it didn't have this little rubber pad. Next G2 didn't come with that. 
That's the only thing the Next G2 didn't approve upon for the OG Next G. Love the Next G1, but I can't wait to play some shows with this. Again, this was a fantastic songwriting tool. This is gonna be the songwriting tool. And I would love to try it out in a live environment because again, like I said earlier, I did some shows with the Next G1 and it sounds clean. It cuts through bad PAs really well. This one is way more customizable. So not only will you probably cut through better, but you'll sound unique in the way you want to sound. I'm at a loss for words and I I'm going to be busy for next month or so just diving deeper and deeper into this next G because between these two things right here, you could have a looped set going back and forth between different sounds, different drum sounds, different tones. Oh my God. It's exciting stuff. So children, do yourselves a favor. Check out the next G2. Check out this bluish purple if you can too. This model, if they still have it, is so beautiful. I cannot recommend it enough. And on that note, children, embrace the future, play guitar, have fun, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.